Alright folks, looks like Quick 100 just got dropped. And I thought it had already happened to be honest, because if you look on the web, there's so much chatter going on about what Quick is, why it apparently helps you to deliver quick applications and instant applications, and why it's so much inno more innovative than compared to other frameworks. Now, if you have missed the news, Quick is the new shiny framework from Builder.io, which is a headless drag and drop CMS system. And their whole slogan is around delivering instant applications at scale. They do it by applying a couple of different performance optimizations, which is around the whole instant loading, of course, about laser loading, reduced rendering in the sense that they delay JavaScript rendering as long as they can. But one innovative part there is that they don't do hydration. So if on other frameworks talk about hydrating on the client and how that can help you speed up applications, they are all about resumability. And so if you're curious about that, definitely check their website and docs. But one thing you might be wondering is like, why do we even talk about Quick? Like this is the NX YouTube channel, so why are we going into Quick? Well, there's a community around Quick which is called Quickifiers, and what they aim to do is use an X to make Quick enterprise ready and more approachable by providing some good DX around it. So what the Quickifiers did is to leverage an X as their platform to build on top. And this works because an X comes in a modular fashion. Now you can just use an X, the NPM package, the very core part of it basically, in your workspace to run it, use its task scheduling, caching, and all those type of benefits. But there's also the plugins part. And you cannot just use those plugins, but you can also go and leverage the dev kit to build something on top of it. And this can be as simple as automating your workspace or go as far as the Quickifiers did and use it as your platform and build an entire custom workspace, in this case, on about Quick, on top of NX dev kit. So the QuickNX plugin is available and fully open source on GitHub, and it also contains all instructions here on how to get started. Now, if you look at the setup, what they use is to create NX workspace, they give the workspace a name as you usually do with an NX setup, and then they leverage a mechanism of our NX plugin system of the dev kit that allows you to give it a preset that fully controls the setup of the workspace. And you can learn more about this if you go to our docs and specifically to the plugin section where there's an entry create a preset which explains how you can leverage that to not only augment an existing workspace basically by adding a new application based on your plugin to that but to control the entire structure of the workspace from the very beginning. And so that's what the quickifiers do here. Basically, if I copy this command and go to my terminal, I can set up here a new quick based NX setup. In the setup process, you can already ask a couple of questions. And so they ask me for uh, an application name. So let's call this quick app. And you can give some options that they basically define in their plugin. And now it will set up the workspace based on how they structured it. And so if you open this up now in VS Code, you get a full setup based on how the quickifiers configure their plugin. And so we see we have the apps and lips folder structure that they maintain because their main focus is to build here some sort of monorepo setup, leveraging an X functionality. And we already have here a quick application generated. It comes with the usual project JSON that they're accustomed from an NX workspace. So it has the different targets that you can invoke. So to serve the application, we can just go ahead and say NX surf and give it the name of the application, which in this case is Quick App. This would then open up here the browser window with the Quick Welcome screen that they built in the application. And this is potentially already ready to be used in development. So we can go here in that Quick App, find some component. Let's go to the index page here and say, welcome to Quick App powered by Annex. And it's a good live refresh. And they did already all the setup uh, for you. So basically they have the whole TypeScript setup, of course, but there's also the Vite config, which makes sure to leverage and import all of their Quick NX specific things that comes from the Quick NX plugin. Also Quick City setup, as well as some more Quick specific parts of how the client and server SSR rendering works. And so by building this on top of the NX dev kit, they can already leverage all the infrastructure, if you want, that NX gives you. And one part is code generators. And they heavily, heavily use that. Now here I'm even using the NX console, 
which automatically detects such generators exposed not just by NX, but also by all the plugins that you have, in this case, Quick NX. And so if I use this, this is the easiest way to browse all the generators. I can search for Quick NX, which is the name of the plugin, and you can already see how many generators I have in here that are super useful. And so for instance, let's go and generate a new component. Uh, let's call this Hello World. I want to have it in a quick app project because right now that's the only one I have. So you see all the functionality that NX provides in terms of code generation, gives you a preview of what will be generated. And obviously, as always, you can also just run the generator command yourself on a CLI if you know the name of it. But I'm new to this quick NX plugin, so that's how I explore it. I just hit run and it would then go and generate here a new component that is a quick component inside that components folder of my quick app. So let's quickly add here some more interesting stuff. Uh, let's use here a signal that we can import here from Builder.io quick. And basically it shows a message which is, which is here, hello world. And when we click it, we change the message to hi. And so again, if we serve our app, which is already happening in the background because we never really terminated the dev server, uh, obviously we need to also import that component here in my page. I'm just going to import here. And so now going back to the application, you can see it already loaded and we have our hello world component loaded there. The cool part here is also to inspect a bit the network tab here. Now, obviously note that we are in development mode, so it's not as optimal as it should be in production. But one thing we can already observe is that if I refresh, I see the JavaScript being loaded down here. But only if I click, it loads further parts that are specific to visualizing, for instance, this message. And this is exactly what is meant by deferring the JavaScript loading at the last possible moment. And obviously it applies some sort of like smart techniques to preload stuff behind the scenes, but you can see how that basically is optimized for speed and time to interactive. And there's a lot more that they added. So basically you can also go ahead and generate a new component, which is based on React. And so they basically wrap that component and quickify it. And so let's let's test this out. So yeah, I create a new component here in the React app, in the Quick app. I don't necessarily need to install the material UI components. So it would generate here a new React-based application into my integration, into an integration folder. You can also see it updates the Vid config and does some more parts on the package JSON for me. So I don't even have to know all the details of what's going on. It would just work. So if I go in here, I go to the integrations, and you can see now it imported here something from Quick React, which is probably also what it installed in the package JSON. So if we go in here, we can see it added this Quick React wrapper. And that gives us a function which is called Quickify, and within that, we can then leverage a normal React component, but it would still be loaded in Quick properly and optimized for running in a Quick application. So one thing that NX highly promotes and incentivizes is also modularizing your application with local libraries. And so rather than having all your logic built within a single application, you should rather potentially split it up into smaller, more fine-grained libraries. And the Quickifiers actually build generators for that as well. So NX usually comes with the default built-in React libraries that come with the React plugin. But given that we have here the Quickifiers plugin installed, we can also generate a library that is either a React library, meaning that it is already optimized to create React components that are then integrated into a quick application using the mechanisms that we have seen before, or I just go straight with a quick-based library. So basically for building out quick based components. So let's go with the first one. Let's call this, let's call this products in the sense that we are building our products domain, which has a product list, product details, parts. And so if we run this generator, you can see it creates that into that lips folder because that's where I wanted to have it. And so I can just run this one. And so this then gives me a new library here into that lips folder, which is called products which already comes with an index.ts, which exposes here that products component, which is a quick component. The cool part is this can now easily be integrated into the application. Basically, the, when we generated that new products library, it also updates here the tsconfig base file with a path mapping that points to this index.ts file. 
And so all I can do is I can go here back into my application. Let's go into that in Next.js route. And just import my new component from in there. And so now here I have my products component and I can just here add a products component into my application. Now this can happen directly via importing a component as I did here, or you can also build that via the routing mechanism. But if we serve this again, then it would load in the component directly into my application view as if it was a local component of the application. And it also works with live refreshes and updating. So if I go to my products component here and add a couple of exclamation marks, I go back in here, you can see it live reloads just seamlessly. So from a developer perspective, you don't even notice it's a different library. And so this can help you really modularize your application, especially if you have larger teams, because they can then be located around these libraries. And there's a whole set of different mechanisms, such as module boundary rules, that help you even more to restrict and make sure this becomes maintainable and stays maintainable in the long run. Now, the Quickifiers did an awesome job here because they didn't just stop here, but they added a ton more generators that can help you set up stuff. One thing is, for instance, to run directly a Tailwind setup. So they can generate a Tailwind setup for you into the application so you don't really have to worry about it. They configure the Vite part for it, they install the post CSS part and the necessary Tailwind packages. They even built on top of the existing NX Storybook plugin to add Storybook support. So I can, for instance, go here to my products library and let's try it out here actually. And I add here such a storybook configuration. It here selects the name of the, the project I wanna apply it, which is products. It gives you some options about quick city support and also some more options about whether you wanna have JavaScript stories or TypeScript stories, which is the default. So if we run this now, it would fetch, as you can see, the NX storybook plugin invoke those generators, so it kind of wraps that plug in there, which then in turn makes sure to gather and install all the necessary storybook NPM packages and set it up properly for this library product in this case. And so you can already see here storybook being configured. And so this picks up properly that we use Vite, so it references the according Vite config of this product library here and configures the stories and add-ons, whatever you might want to need for a quick base setup. It even pulls here in the, store, the quick specific storybook configuration. And so the advantage here now is that if I create new components in here, for instance, let's generate a new quick component, I can now say, let's say button, let's call this my button so it's more distinguished. And then I can set down here, generate stories. And so what happens, as you can already see here in the preview, it would also generate a storybook story for that button for me. And so if I go in here now, I see my button that now also has the storybook story generated and pre-configured with a couple of different options, which now you can jump in and actually obviously customize it even further. And moreover, it also added a new target in the project JSON. So that's where all the different targets that you can invoke are situated. And so you can see here, there's a new target storybook as well as build storybook. And so we can click that directly or just run the command and X run product colon storybook. And this now serves that product library here in storybook. And so if you go to 4,400, we can now see how my button works component here is being loaded in storybook. And that's not even all. There's also generators that help you set up modification for a more micro front-end oriented architecture, which help you kind of generate the host application, configure that properly, generate the different remotes and connect them to the host and so on. But the main advantage here that I want to, I want to show you is how you can leverage NX as the basis. So you don't have to just go with the default plugins that NX provides, but you can build on top of it. And so they leverage all the generators functionality that they have from NX but they also get code migrations. So they can leverage and write code migrations to help you automatically upgrade between quick versions, configure and reconfigure your workspace based on potential breaking changes that quick might introduce, obviously, as it keeps growing. And obviously all the caching part is there as well. So if you go, for instance, and have a look at our application here, I'm pretty sure we broke some tests, but what we can do, for instance, is run all the tests of this workspace here. 
And so as you can see, we broke a test probably by changing some of the components. In fact, here there's the hello world component, which here says hello world, but I think we mentioned something like hello world. Yeah, exactly. And so if we fix this test and then run the whole test again, we can now see all of them pass, but there's one interesting note as well, is that the first one, since that has passed already the first time around, hasn't been executed again, because here is now where the NX caching kicks in and just pulls it out of cache. And obviously everything is then much faster. Just as if we rerun it now again, you would see it would be immediate, instantly, because everything is being cached. And that not just holds for the local cache in NX, obviously they can easily attach NX Cloud on top of it, so there's this whole infrastructure that doesn't need to be built for every new framework that comes out, but it can just leverage what is already there and fully customize it from the ground up. And it also makes Quick more approachable, if you think, because we were able to generate a new application, get set up immediately without having to mess around with the actual configuration of Quick. And I was able to create a new component, configure that component, change it, work and iterate on it without having to learn all the details from the get-go. And then I can just go deeper as I keep progressing and as I want to learn more about different areas of how Quick works under the hood. So I hope this was helpful. Definitely check out the Quickifiers community as well. They have an awesome Discord channel where you can chime in and discuss, maybe even get involved in the plugin development if that's something you're interested in. Definitely also subscribe and like this video. Let me know in the comments whether you would want to see similar videos in the future. And I'll see you in the next one.